telling you about it may draw too much attention because currently it's free and I want to keep it that way. So do me a favor and keep this video on the down low. <laughs> yes, we will be exploring an online application that is not an OBS script or a plugin, but an online application developed by a god level programmer by the name of Steven Seguin out of Canada. This application can do many, many exciting tasks, but we'll be talking about its free video conferencing capability. The application is called OBS Ninja. Let's get some. Big thanks to Angel and DJ Vibe for reaching out to me and letting me know about this fantastic application. So I want to thank everybody for chiming in and letting me know about all these cool software plugins and scripts and all these cool applications. It's a big help to the channel. And if there's anything that strikes your interest and you want to know more about it, be sure to look me up in comments and let me know. I'll look into it. And if it's cool, I'll definitely make a video about it. So what is the deal with this with this website, this OBS.ninja? Let's take a real quick look at it. Here it is here, OBS Ninja. What a great TLD. You go to this website and you like and you look at it and you go, eh, I don't get it. And then you bolt. I did see this site a long time ago, looked at it, and I just didn't understand what it was all about, and I left. And I imagine that most people do the same thing because it simply doesn't make a lot of sense. What does this website do? Why are people talking about it? And why is it so cool? I'll tell you why. Wow. The reason why is because it uses peer-to-peer -peer technology. It goes into a switching server. Not, It has no storage or anything. It goes into this computer and it does this cool finagling switching capability. And it will take your video feed and your mic feed and make a website with it and show it on that web page. You can then take that web page and import it into OBS and... Bob's your uncle, you've got someone from California, from across the pond, maybe in, you know, in Europe somewhere, anywhere on the planet Earth, you can see them talking on a web page and you can import it into OBS. This is amazing. This program is absolutely mind boggling. Big, big shout out to Steve for Seguin. I, I think I hashed his name earlier on. I believe it's Seguin. I believe it's French. Anyway, Steve, I want to thank you so much for putting your heart and soul into this software. This is unbelievable. I'm not kidding. This is really cool. I want to give you a fast summary as to why the software is so amazing. Check it out. If you go and click add your camera to OBS, okay? Click it. It opens up. It asks you what, the, what your video source is. In this case, it's going to be my C922. Then I'm going to select my default microphone. Okay, and I'm going to hit start. Now watch what happens. Bam. It creates a page and it tells me that the browser source for this feed that you see right now is this link here. If I click it, it automatically puts it into cache. Thanks again, Steve. That makes it so much easier. And if I go into OBS and create a new source for my scene, select browser, hit OK. Highlight the URL field and paste in the URL that I just copied. Hit OK. It imports that feed that I just created. The sound that you're hearing, the reason why it's echoing right now is because you're hearing the sound from the web page and my microphone right here now. So let me turn this off. So it is very important to have headphones on, okay, and not your speakers on your, on your computer on because you'll get an echo. Now let's dig into some more features that this thing has that's even more cool in regards to grouping people together in a room. Okay, let's do that now. There are two basic roles when setting up a video conference. There's the person in charge of setting up the video conference room and then there are the people who are invited to come in. So it is my goal to explain to you or show you how to create the room from the administrator's perspective and then what it's like to sign into the room, okay? So if I get those two things squared away, then you'll have a global perspective and then you can tear into this thing and play with it and enjoy it and use it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to obs.ninja and we're gonna click the box on the left, add group to chat to OBS. No sign up, no cash, no nonsense, Click the button and you're in. Now I'm gonna name this room October and I'm gonna create a password called dog. I recommend that you do this just for security purposes. And then you hit enter 
the room's control center and it gives you this interface. This page provides information on the links and what those links can do for both the invitee and for you as the admin. You may have noticed the two squares that showed up on the left. I invited myself as a speaker into the group. I also created a screen grab from another browser showing Jenna Marbles, and I did this so I can explain how to bring this into OBS. I will be explaining how to do this in just a minute. And all you have to do to copy these links, they're all different colors, is just put your cursor on it and click on it and it will copy it into cache for you automatically. You don't have to do control V or paste or anything like that. It just stores it in cache when you click on it. The first two are designed for the invitee, the person you're inviting into the group and you have a choice. The blue one, when submitted to the invitee, allows them to see both you who have already signed up to the group, right? You're already in there and to see themselves. And that's what I would recommend that you send to an invitee. They're gonna to wanna to see both you talking and themselves talking on their computer while you do the video conference, naturally. The red one only allows them to see, to see themselves. I don't really know why you would wanna just allow them to see, the, see themselves talking and not you talking during the conversation, right? That would be kind of strange for them. The green buttons are what you use to import the conference call or the video conference into OBS and you have choices. Uh, the first one I wouldn't recommend because this, uh, I, I just don't understand, honestly, I don't even understand why you would wanna copy that one and use it in OBS. The, the one below it brings in both video feeds in one source, okay? Which I wouldn't recommend because if you wanna put two videos in frames side by side, you have to, create the source twice and it's kind of confusing and it's not the way I would recommend doing it. What I recommend you do to bring these things into OBS is to copy the solo link for each person. So if I put my cursor on the, the dark screen link here, it copies it into cache. I go into OBS, right? I've got a uh, transparent ping here that shows a frame. If I hit the plus button, go into browser, hit OK, and paste that link that I just copied right into the, the URL here and hit OK. Boom, it brings the feed right in. Now I've got the volume turned down so that we don't get any looping or anything like that. Uh, as you can see, it's above the image here. So I'll just hit the down arrow and put myself underneath of it and then hold my uh, Alt key and drag the image so that the aspect is sort of similar to the available area in the frame here and make myself a little bit bigger there we go and sort of clean this up as best i can very good very nice so there i am in the frame perfect right and now if i want to bring jenna marbles in i go back into the url the website here with the interface click that link right pretty cut and dry do the same thing hit the plus sign go to browser hit ok paste the URL, hit OK, and Jenna Marbles comes in. Boop, there she is. And let's get that cleaned up. So Alt key, bring that in like that. There we go. You get the picture. Let's put her down a little bit below the frame. There we go. I'll hit the play button there. There we go. And there she is. It's really not that difficult. Now you would have to do, if you had like say 10 people in the room, you would have to do this 10 times with frames and na naming everything. So it's a real good idea to have the frame set up in advance, right? In OBS and the names have it all teed up so that when you get this thing set up and ready to go live, you're ready to rock and roll. So it's really important to have your T's crossed and your, your I's dotted before you get this thing all set up. If this is the first time you've been at my channel, I just wanted to let you know that I provide creator success by sort of taking all the complexity out of all this tech and software that, that you need to get involved with to win here at the YouTube venue. And if you subscribe and click the bell, you'll get notification usually every Tuesday to let you know that new videos from my channel are out. And sometimes I try to get stuff out on Thursday. I'm not doing this full time. I only work on this during the weekends. And if I could actually do this full time, if I could justify doing this full time, my God, I would make some videos that would blow you out of the water. All right, let's get back into OBS Ninja. Okay, let me show you what this is like from the perspective of the person being invited into the group. Let's pretend I'm an admin and I click the blue link the, at the top. It goes into cache. That's the one I recommend that you use when inviting people. 
and you now have to communicate to that person what that link is. This can be sometimes a pain in the butt, especially if you wanna text it to them or type it into your phone and email it. So an easier way to do that, to convey the link, is to go into anotepad.com, create a note here real quick, I'll call it link, you can name it anything you want, put your cursor in the main field and paste the link in there. As you can see, it is a complex link. Hit save, and it will create a page with the link in it that has a, sim a more simple link. That's, an, that's sort of an, uh, an alternative to the complex link. I wish, maybe if Steve watches this video, I wish there was a way to make the links more tiny because it is kind of a pain to convey what the link is to people sometimes. So anyway, upon you receiving the link, you open up a new tab in your browser. So let's say I'm you know, a thousand miles away in California. The admin who created the room is in PA. You paste your link in there hit the button and it asks you for the password that was created. In this case, it was dog, capital D-O-G. Whoops, there we go. Hit okay. And then you have a choice. You can either use show your computer screen, which you probably wouldn't want to use right away, or join with your camera. It opens up the camera join interface. You select your streaming camera, there I am. And you define your microphone. In this case, it's the ATR USB mic and click the test button just to make sure the sound is coming out of your computer. It is working fine. Hit the start button. And, and as, as you can, can see, see, let me turn, turn off, off the, the microphone, microphone here. here. As you can see, it shows both the admin, your screen, and everybody else who's in the room so that you can monitor everyone during the live stream. It's really cool. You have these options at the bottom where you can turn your mic on and off. You can send messages to people, which is really cool. It's just a neat interface, really special, really neat and simple, really when you think about it. And live streams or conference calls is not the only thing that you can do with this. Think about it. You could bring your friend in on a game and play a game together online with OBS. You could troubleshoot someone's computer with OBS. You could troubleshoot somebody's computer without OBS. I mean, getting it set up is so easy. And there's actually a full list of all the benefits that this thing could do for you in the wiki. So if you're interested in seeing where that is, just simply go to OBS Ninja, OBS.Ninja, I should say. And when there's a link in here, it's kind of hidden a little bit. Let's see, where is it? Here it is, Wiki for Advanced Info. Click this link. And it gives you all kinds of great information, how-tos, um, all kinds of neat stuff in here uh, that gives you more in-depth information on the program. And in regards to support, Steve is very good at uh, responding to comments in, at his channel. Uh, you can find it very easily. Just Google OBS Ninja. You'll see it pop up at number one. He also has a Discord as well. So if we go back real quick, um, he's got a subreddit believe it or not, which is really cool to have. Here's all the information in the subreddit if you want to troubleshoot any issue that you may have. And he does have a Discord. Where is that Discord? Oh, here it is here. It's hard to see the links because there's no lines underneath of them. It kind of makes it difficult to find the stuff. There it is there. Just click it, and uh, you can get invited in the Discord and find out what's going on there. And, of course, he leaves his email. I mean, you, the developer is making himself absolutely accessible for help. It's an unbelievable thing. The Internet is a great place. If you want to see some more cool videos, just hang out, and I've got a link to some really great ones. I hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the flip side. Stay strong. Keep fighting. This is Scott Victor. Get some!